Have you seen Samara? There's no way she doesn't get played in a solo lane. Hey Summoners, what's going on? My name is Nathan Ng, and today I'm here with another set of Korean builds for you guys. It's a new patch, so we've got some new builds to go over. Patch 10.20 has some pretty solid changes, and like always, we're always here to help you guys pick up that edge on your opponents, or even just find a new, fun, exciting build. Before we get started though, I do want you guys to know that if you're trying to make that final push for your ranked goals this season, then look no further than ProGuides.com. We've got coaches, we've got live classes, and we've also got VOD reviews to help you guys step up your game. If you're serious about improving, then I heavily suggest you guys check it out. And for our question of the day, what do you think your strength in League of Legends is? I want to know if you guys are savvy teamfighters or mechanical geniuses that always win your 1v1s and 2v2s. Personally, I like to think I played the game long enough to feel confident mostly in my laning. While I don't think I'm the greatest teamfighter, I feel like I win my 1v1s pretty much every single time and I'm honestly held back by my teammates. Alright, I'm just kidding about that last part, kinda, but go ahead and leave your answers in the comments below. And with that being said, let's go ahead and hop right into the video. Starting off with the top lane, we got Utility Shen. Beginning with the top lane, let's go ahead and talk about a build from one of our favorite imports to NA that was brought at the World Play-Ins recently. From the shadows. Team Liquid's impact busted out the Shen, a pick that's clearly very powerful in the current meta. However, we saw a small twist on the build this time around with him building an immense amount of team utility. Shen's kit makes him an excellent protector, guarding his allies with his ultimate shield as well as his ability to create a zone where his allies won't get hit by basic attacks. However, Impact took this a step further to keep his allies safe from danger. By building extra utility items, he was able to ensure his teammates stayed alive and maximize their damage output. For runes, he'll run the standard setup. Grass with the Undying, Shield Bash, Bone Plating, Overgrowth, Taste of Blood, and Ultimate Hunter. With Shen, you'll definitely want to run Shield Bash to supplement his trading as it synergizes excellently with his passive. Ultimate Hunter is another great rune to help reduce Shen's immense ultimate cooldown. For items built Titanic Hydra, Ninja Tabby, Knight's Vow, Locket of Iron Solari, and Randuin's Omen, as well as Adaptive Helmet. Overall, this build is an excellent option if you have hyper carries who need that extra shielding like Twitch or Kogma. They naturally out DPS, or at least they should, many other champions, and keeping them alive is actually key to winning the game. The next top lane build is an adaptation that we've seen Narmains make. Okay. They don't run this setup every single game, but it's a great way to kite semi-mobile fighters in the top lane. Phase Rush Nar is a go-to keystone for trying to create space and disengaging against enemies. Nar activates Phase Rush actually pretty easily, with his Q followed up by two other hits. If his enemies end up behind him, then he can use his E as well, jumping on top of them and bouncing away while also adding an extra hit count towards Phase Rush. After activating Phase Rush, you'll also have naturally activated Nar's W, adding even more mobility and even letting you disengage or continue to cut your enemies into what would ideally be a victory. Since Nar is ranged, having some extra mobility should give him an easier time fighting enemies, chasing them, or just to jump on top of them for aggressive trades. For runes, run Phase Rush, Nimbus Cloak, Celerity, Water Walking, Magical Footwear, and Cosmic Insight. If you're a little scared and want some extra defensive coverage rather than free utility from the inspiration tree, take Resolve and run runes like Bone Plating and Overgrowth. For items, you'll build Black Cleaver, Ninja Tabby, Gargoyle Stone Plate, Randuin's Omen, Thornmail, and Adaptive Helmet. Our final top lane build is on hit Tristana. Where's the action? Tristana in the solo lanes was an extremely popular pick towards the end of the season as well. She's come back around it seems. This time, we've actually noticed a few high elo players spamming ADCs in the top lane, and Tristana is one of them. Of course, it goes without saying that Blade of the Rune King is one of the strongest items in the game. It provides an immense amount of damage per second, decent healing, and allows you to steal some movement speed from your enemies. For a marksman, this is even more important because it makes it easier to kite enemies and slowly chip away at their health bars. Though I personally don't condone going range top laners, if you really, really do need that win and if you have no dignity, then by all means go for it. For runes, you'll run Press the Attack, Overheal, Legend Bloodline, Coup de Grasse, Absolute Focus, and Gathering Storm. Very normal stuff. For items, however, build Blade of the Rune King, Berserker Greaves, Wit's End, Ginsu's Rage Blade, Death's Dance, and Infinity Edge. Wit's End, as well as Death's Dance, provides a plethora of defensive stats as well as an incredible amount of sustain. You'll be running Overheal and Legend Bloodline in your runes, so even if your enemies do manage to break through and take you head on, that's actually not the end of the journey. It's definitely possible to survive with this immense amount of lifesteal that this build packs, and you'll also be able to deal a solid amount of hybrid damage by incorporating in a wit's end. That covers all our top lane builds, so take a quick last look on the screen where we've put all of them up for you guys. Unfortunately, we're gonna skip through the jungle this time, as a lot of new builds seem to be surfacing across the other roles, so let's go ahead and jump into the mid lane next. 
All right, who didn't see this coming? Seriously. Settle down, sweet cake. Samara was clearly gonna be an absolute unit based off her kit alone. Even though she's a marksman, there's no doubt when you have that many tools in a kit, players are gonna be taking them into the mid lane. Take Wuxia, for example. We've got another one with Samara. Samara's build is rather straightforward, but since she's a new champion, we felt like going over them so you guys can have a general idea of what to run with her. Overall, Samara has an explosive playstyle that rewards her for jumping in at the right time and going all in. With their aggressive tendencies, you'll need to opt for some lifesteal to ensure that you can survive those sorts of balls to the wall situations. Thus, for runes, you'll be running Conqueror, Triumph, Legend Bloodline, Coup de Grasse, Ravenous Hunter, and Taste of Blood. For items, build Essence Reaver, Berserker Greaves, Infinity Edge, Phantom Dancer, Death Dance, and Bloodthirster. Next up is a silent spell that actually struck as very, very interesting. Sweet liberation! While you probably wouldn't want one in a completed 6 item build, Ardent Sensor is actually a passable item to the build when considering that in most games you really don't get those 6 items. Ardent Sensor's low price point means that you'll be able to finish a completed item much faster than your enemies and, well, hopefully you'll take over the game. At least in Korean solo queue and high elo Korean solo queue for that matter, we rarely see games go that long. Since we've already talked about it, let's go ahead and run through the whole build first. For runes, run Fleet Footwork, Presence of Mind, Legend Tenacity, Last Stand, Biscuit Delivery, and Cosmic Insight. While for items you'll want a Hexic Proto Belt, Mercury Treads, Zhonya's Hourglass, Ardent Sensor, Rabadon's Death Cap, and Lich Bane. Ultimately, Ardent Sensor is a pretty decent third item or fourth item because it's almost so cheap. For 2500 gold, you can fill up a slot to increase your healing power, get 60 AP, and also 10% more cooldown reduction. Especially if you're going for a fast 40% CDR, this item fits in pretty nicely and allows you to hit a faster but weaker power spike. The healing power does indeed synergize with Silas's W healing. Since you've built other AP items beforehand, you've already increased the healing from W from AP ratios, and then on top of that, you increase that healing with the healing power multiplier. And that's what I call value. While it's comparable and even superior in damage output to simply build needlessly large rods, sometimes you don't even base with enough gold but still want to get stronger. The components for an Ardent Sensor are rather small but also act as very good standalone items. Ether West provides movement speed while Forbidden Idol is an extremely cheap way to access 10% more CDR. Ideally, this item is replaced in cases where games go on too long, but once again, it's a pretty good way to hit that fast power spike. One pick that we've been seeing a lot is Graves Mid. Try me. His incredible wave clear and burst damage makes him a viable mid laner who can thrive especially because he excels at shorter trades. In the longer one, he instead benefits from the fact that his E provides offensive stats. Because AD champions are gifted with stronger basic attacks, he can definitely win those trades. Especially in the case of Graves with his shotgun, even longer range fights that require several basic attacks can still go in his favor. For most mid laners, Graves comes off as quite a surprise. He's an excellent draft mixup as players will always deduce that he's headed towards the jungle. In addition to this, you'll be dealing a ridiculous amount of unexpected burst damage, especially after level 6. I don't know if you guys ever played the game when Graves was first released, but this kind of reminds me of that. The runes that you'll be running are Electrocute, Sudden Impact, Eyeball Collection, Relentless Hunter, Demolish, and Bone Plating. Sudden Impact alongside Electrocute are going to be very significant in increasing your burst damage. We're used to seeing Graves jungle players run Phase Rush and Fleet Footwork right now. Graves mid is already a surprise, but add on some extra often unwanted by the recipient burst damage, and you got a solid surprise pick. For items, you'll build Yumu's Ghost Blade, Dust Blade of Drakthar, Black Cleaver, Mortal Reminder, Edge of Night, and Berserker Greaves. Another advantage of this build is that you'll often find a pair of normal boots, the 300 gold ones, sufficient. Yumu's Ghost Blade alongside Relentless Hunter provides an immense amount of combat movement speed and pretty much gets their job done. Every purchase is a pretty big power spike. Components like Long Swords add a little extra damage, Serrated Dirks provides some lethality, and while completing those items, of course, do some pretty good things for Graves. Our final mid lane build is one that also works in the top lane. Fine. Considering the fact that Rise has been buffed this patch, we felt like it was an appropriate time to bring up the new Rise build. Righteous Glory has been tossed around here and there, but now might be the time for you. That's right, you, to give it a try. By running Righteous Glory, you're able to activate it for an immense amount of movement speed to get in range of that E, and then W your opponents for that fat root. Or with Righteous Glory, you can run a little bit faster to your death and turbo int my games. Without expending flash, it's possible to hard engage and then force fights with your teammates. On top of this, it's not a bad purchase by any means either. The item provides armor, health, mana, and cooldown reduction. All of these are very solid on Rise since he often does need to get close in those fights. For runes, run Phase Rush, Mana Flow Band, Transcendence, Water Walking, Cheap Shot, and Ravenous Hunter. For items, you'll run Rod of Ages, Seraph's Embrace, Sorcerer's Shoes, Righteous Glory, Morella Nomicon, and Rabdon's Death Cap. That's gonna be it for the middle lane, so we'll be putting those builds one more time on the screen as we head into the bottom lane. 
First for the bottom lane we got Samara yet again. Like we mentioned before, the items are pretty straightforward, but since we've gone ahead and mentioned her twice, we can at least talk about some alternative itemization as well. Showtime! We've already mentioned her core build, but it's worth noting that you can trade out her Bloodthirster for Mercurial Scimitar or even a Guardian's Angel instead. Another itemization change that you can make as well is that you can instead replace Death Stance with Bloodthirster and opt into the two items that we just mentioned. Overall, however, the items and runes we mentioned seem to be the most common at the moment. One of the new builds in the bottom lane that we want to go over, however, is Halo Blade's Tristana. I might just drop in. Tristana has been struggling a little bit, but there's always going to be some players out there who just want to make their favorite champion work. In the case of Tristana, Halo Blade seems to be the one way to make her feel a little bit stronger. The burst of attack speed it provides makes it so much easier to detonate your E on your targets. Without Halo Blades, her enemies can often just run away and make sure that Tristana doesn't even land that final blow, and that's pretty huge. When Tristana hits an enemy marked by her bomb four times, it instantly resets her W cooldown, meaning that she gains another jump to closer distance or just to reposition. For runes, you'll be running Halo Blades, Cheap Shot, Eyeball Collection, Relentless Hunter, Legend Alacrity, and Coup de Grasse. Next up on the list are Infinity Edge, Berserker Greaves, Static Shift, Storm Razor, Bloodthirster, and Lord Dominic's Regards. The reason you're going to opt out for flat damage rather than just Blade of the Rune King, which is a pretty popular item for her, is because you're going to be running Halo Blades. You get a ton of attack speed from it, so instead you benefit more from building flat damage. Make those first three basic attacks really count by going for crit, crit chance, and flat AD. Another bottom build that we've noticed is Electrocute Vagar. I smell death! We've seen Vagar bottom before, but most of the time it's usually ran with Glacial Augment. But for you chats out there that want to play for kills and take matters into your own hands, Electrocute might be what you want instead. The extra burst damage makes trades way more potent and landing a full combo will reliably activate Electrocute. Instead of the immense pick making potential you get from Glacial Augment, you'd instead gain a terrifying amount of extra damage by using your Electrocute instead. However, you'll still want to build a Hexic GLP because the slow, while weaker without Glacial Augment, will make it easier for you to follow up with the stun. For runes, run Electrocute, Taste of Blood, Eyeball Collection, Ravenous Hunter, Presence of Mind, and Cut Down. Cut Down is an excellent rune, Vagar has rather low base HP, meaning that he'll be able to benefit from his Cut Down bonuses rather early on. As the game progresses, however, his HP does scale up to be a little bit higher than other squishy champions. However, by the late game, you'll have enough AP to not even worry about whether or not you'll be able to one-shot the enemy carries. And set cutdown will benefit you heavily as it provides some bonus damages against champions that are harder to kill, the tanky ones. For items built, Hextech GLP, Sorcerer Shoes, Zhonya's Hourglass, Void Staff, Rabadon's Deathcap, and Spellbinder. Finally, we're gonna go ahead and throw bot lane Kindred into the mix as well. All will know us in time. Surprisingly enough, Kindred has been finding a decent amount of success in the bottom lane. A lot of the time, Kindred players will run Exhaust rather than Heal. This allows them to either peel for themselves or even play more aggressive with it. One of Kindred's greatest strengths as a bot laner is the fact that she is one of the best champions at combating the inevitable Fiesta tower dives that eventually make their way towards the bottom lane. Her ultimate can sell off for an extra amount of time and also open up potential outplays under turret. While other marksmen would just probably roll over and die when they find themselves in a 2v4 situation, skies are the limit with Kindred. Alternatively, Kindred sets up some pretty solid tower dives with her ultimate as well. If anything, she can allow the turret to aggro her close to max range and then cast her ultimate when she tanks the turret for her teammates. Aside from that, however, Kindred's mobility makes her a very solid aggressive pick. While her Q doesn't add a stack to the press attack counter, it does let her close the distance and make it easier for Kindred to attack her opponents three times. Trading with all of her abilities, Kindred players can usually come out on top because of how much damage her W and E add. Once she gets her enemies low enough, Kindred has no issues on getting the job done while finishing things off. Another cool added bonus is that if you are on the blue side and your jungler is cool with it, you can go ahead and take Krugs pretty safely. For runes, run Press the Attack, Presence of Mind, Legend Bloodline, Coup de Grasse, Nimbus Cloak, and Gathering Storm. For items, build Infinity Edge, Essence Revert, Rune is Hurricane, Berserker Grease, Mala Mamordius, and Guardian's Angel. That's gonna be it for the bottom lane build, so make sure to take one last look at them on the screen for one more time, as we're gonna be concluding with the support builds. First off is a blast from the past with Fiddlestick support. He's an entirely different beast, but he's managed to make his way back into the bottom lane once again, just in time for spooky season. I hear crows. The big issue is that players are trying to play the new fiddle like the old fiddle, which has led to a lot of suboptimal play. However, support Fiddlesticks is more focused on poking opponents down and punishing bad engages. Running Arcane Comet will instead allow you to poke down your opponent slowly with max range E, and then disengage with his Q. A lot of players will max either their W or Q. When you manage to successfully fear the enemy from the Fog of War with either E or R, you'll deal a significant amount of extra damage if you're maxing your Q early on. On the other hand, maxing W will allow you to drain a ton of health back during team fights and force your opponents to expend crowd control on you as well as mandate Grievous Wound for any fight. As the game progresses, you'll scale up and then well, you'll become an AP carry for your team. 
For runes, run Arcane Comet, Nimbus Cloak, Absolute Focus, Scorch, Perfect Timing, and Biscuit Delivery. For items, build Bulwark of the Mountain, Boots of Mobility, Zanya's Hourglass, Morel Anomicon, Rabidon's Death Cap, and Void Staff. The final build that we've got for you guys in the bottom lane is Unsealed Spellbook Rakan. War is in the dance. Rakan is a rather versatile pick as he's got a lot built into his kit. He has sustain, hard crowd control, and a lot of mobility to back him up. Running Unsealed Spellbook allows you to access a ton of summoner spells that can all benefit Rakan based on the situation. Cleanse, for example, allows Rakan to tank hard, crowd control for his allies, break out of it, and then immediately jump to safety back with his abilities. A summer spell like Teleport is great in cases where Rakan just wants to look for the cross map play, or instead return to lane more quickly after getting poked out. There's a ton of functionality with this keystone, as Rakan can find a use for basically every summoner spell. For runes, use Unsealed Spellbook, Magical Footwear, Futures Market, Cosmic Insight, Zombie Ward, and Ultimate Hunter. Cosmic Insight and Ultimate Hunter will significantly reduce the cooldown of his ultimate, meaning that you'll be able to make play after play to secure victories. For items, build Bork of the Mountain, Zeke's Convergence, Ionian Boots of Lucidity, Shirelia's Reverie, Ardent Sensor, and Gargoyle's Stoneplate. Alright, one last time we put those builds on the screen for you guys, so make sure you go ahead and check them out. That's gonna conclude this episode of Korean Builds. Thank you guys so much for watching. We appreciate your support, so if you guys aren't subscribed already, make sure you subscribe to our channel and ring that notification bell for more videos such as this. We always want to bring informative content to help you guys improve. Once again, ProGuides.com is where you need to go if you want to improve as well. Until next time, best of luck on the Rift Summoners. Stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.